Now, equipment that you're going to need. Uh, the most important thing that you are going to need, where it all starts, is this. This is called a practice chanter. You do not start on the full bagpipes for many reasons, largely because there are way, way too many things that you need to focus on on the full set of pipes that are way too much for a beginner, okay? So this is going to be your tool. Now, for the sake of illustration, I have two different chanters here. I have my very first chanter. It is 25 years old. It is still in excellent working condition. It is made of a plastic called Polypenko and is made by a company nearby me here in Fife in Scotland called uh, RT Shepherd. Um, it is a smaller chanter. Um, it is largely aimed at children. Uh, as I was a child when I started learning, it actually would do for an adult. You know, I can still fit my fingers quite comfortably on that. Uh, the chanter that I now use is a much larger one. It is actually in the same scale length as the chanter you will get on the full set of bagpipes. The benefit of that being is that the difference uh, in the distance between the holes is slightly larger as you would find on a full pipe chanter and the transition between the two is, is more natural. Uh, both fundamentally working exactly the same way. This one has a slightly higher pitch than this one because this one is longer and we'll explain how that works in a second. Uh, the main difference between the two um, and ultimately this will come down to whichever model of chanter you go for, is that the blow stick opening up into the saddle where the reed sits is sealed with hemp. Whereas on the larger chanter, the, this version I should say made by Hardy in Glasgow, um, is actually sealed with two rubber gaskets. Uh, I'm trying to bring this close to the camera as I possibly can. There's no hemp there. Um, to be honest, neither offers an advantage over the other, except for the fact that the hemp will absorb more saliva than the rubber gaskets do. But you have less maintenance with this. Uh, again, with this one being plastic, they're both uh, easily taken apart and easily cleaned out and dried off. You need to get one of these. You can go for whichever chanter you want. All bagpipe manufacturers make their own chanters and generally speaking, they are made of the same kind of plastic, polypenko, extremely durable plastic, lasts forever. Um, you don't need to invest in a very expensive blackwood chanter at the moment because as a beginner, it's not worth your time. And if you decide that you choose not to continue with this, then I wouldn't waste your money. You're gonna be spending quite a lot of money on that. Um, a decent practice chanter will set you back between 30 and 50 pounds, depending on who you go with and where you go from. I will put some links for places that you can look to. Uh, my advice is to get a brand new one and ask for the, the reeds that would go with it. The reed inside the practice chanter is also made of plastic. Um, it is a very, very low pressure instrument. It doesn't need to be that strong. Speak to the bagpipe manufacturer and get the right kind of reed for that. That is the most important thing you need because everything else can now be digitized uh, and found online, as of course you're experiencing with these videos. Um, my recommendation, of course, is that if you are going to buy paper copies of music or if you're the kind of person that likes things to be printed off, get a music stand. Music stands can be really cheap. Uh, you could even get a document holder for your desk if you prefer, but you know, a, a good music stand or a reasonable music stand, somewhere between five and 10 pounds. Uh, you'll easily get one off eBay or Amazon. Um, eventually you will want to get something called a metronome. Um, thankfully with the advent of smartphones and apps, you will easily get a free metronome for your phone. It's essentially it, it is giving you, uh, something to play in time too. And this is so important, uh, as we will learn along the way. That's all the things you need to get started. Um, I guess one final point is if you are a complete beginner to anything musical, then this course is going to look, obviously, a lot at um, music theory. Um, the music theory, thankfully, between the bagpipes and every other instrument has a lot of crossover. There are things that are unique to the bagpipes that you won't find necessarily anywhere else. Uh, there are very little of that. If you already are a player of another instrument, of course, you know most of the music theory stuff. So a lot of that you can kind of bypass. Although I do caution you that because of the unique way that some music theory th things are used for the bagpipes, you need to pay close attention to those things because you will do things very differently. If you are already the player of a wind instrument, anything other than the bagpipes, then I suggest to you very quickly that you give up and forget about everything that you've ever learned for that instrument. Speaking as a saxophone player, okay, 
the process of blowing into the bagpipes is entirely, entirely different than it is blowing into a woodwind or any other instrument. And we will look at that why in a later video. So leave your expectations at the door if you're already another musician. Please come with an open mind if you are not a musician and we'll get started.